Last week we were talking about lightning in a bottle. And I decided to pick this one because not only does Mick have a lot of good stories that I've enjoyed immensely. And we haven't had Mick's story time for a while. I don't yeah. know if he's going to tell any stories, but I have it dusted off the theme song just in case we need it. And oh I actually, why, I do remember seeing this. I was like, I don't even remember if I've seen it, but it showed up on Tubi and I'm like, we got to do this one. It's Runaway Train from 1985 with John Voight, uh, Eric Roberts, and I can't remember the woman's name, Rebecca De Mornay. Rebecca De Mornay. Rebecca yeah, DeMornay. that's right. Yes. But anyway. Yeah, I will just give it away now. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was lightning in a bottle, actually. I thought it was a really good movie overall. It, it, it is interesting uh, because it's actually uh, it's actually based on a on a uh, on a Japanese story. Yes, Akira, one of the best directors, probably probably the top five directors in the whole world that ever existed. Akira Kurosawa, who did like. A lot of amazing movies in the what fifties, right, right. And he's and then, amazing. But he wrote this in nineteen sixty-five, I think it was. I think I read that somewhere. Right. But he, for some reason, couldn't make it. I don't remember what the reasons why. He couldn't. He couldn't make it, and and it was finally picked up by Canon. Yes, which isn't really a stellar. The one thing you gotta say is Canon, but but Canon. It's like the Taco Bell of the the film industry, right? At the well, time. Yeah, but but but. They they wanted to be artists. I mean, this is they went out and they got a they they, they grabbed this script and they got them a Russian uh, a, a Russian director a which, Ru Russian who, refugee director, right? <laughs> yeah, which which this is the funniest thing I remember. That I, like I I I got to the set one. Story time. Story time. It's story time with story time with Mick. Story time with Mick. Story time with Mick. It's story time with Mick. It's story time with Mick. Mick's drawn is the best. He is gonna blow your mind. Story time with Mick. Story time with Mick. I got to the set, set and, and I knew that the director was going to be around that day. And so I asked my art director, uh, what, what is, because I was doing construction coordination uh, and art directing. <laughs> was it on second unit? I asked him, I said, so you did the good stuff, right? The second unit stuff. Yeah. How? Yeah, we were doing all the second unit stuff that yeah. became the first unit stuff. Uh, uh, and I said, well, uh, what is what does the director look like uh, when he's coming? And he turns to me and he goes, he says, you'll never, he says, this is a guy that carries around his own little uh, uh, storm cloud, right? <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I looked over and, and, and we're in Alaska and we're outdoors and there's a guy that is dressed for weather even worse than we're standing in. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he he had about five long coats on, and 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 what it did is it it kind of encapsulated him, so that his face was so far sunk down inside of the collars is that you just it was black, you know. It's like Kenny on South Park. It's, and as many times as I talked to him, I don't think that I ever once saw his face. Oh, wow. But he he spoke with an accent. Um, in Russian, that was so heavy that it was, you know, it was up to the con a, a certain consensus of the people around as to what he had said. <laughs> oh, you can't have had to guess what he said. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was multiple guess. I, oh man. But did he? Uh, he directed. Uh, uh, what was the one? He Tango and Cash, wasn't it? Yeah, he did Tango and Cash. Didn't he move back to Russia? I, I was trying to learn about him, but I didn't really find much other than. He had yeah, a bad I experience with Tango and Cash, apparently. I don't know. My my experience began and end with, ended with him in Alaska. Well, I just yeah. thought it was interesting because I went down this rabbit hole. And I'm like, oh, he tried to get Sylvester Stallone and Robert Duvall. And, <laughs> and then he did Tango and Cash, which was interesting. But but no, the point was that uh, he got John Voight because he was friends with the guy. And that yeah. was the best get ever, I think, for this one. Even though John Voight was a little over the top, I think. But I think he was awesome in this. I think he was the anchor was, of the movie. But he was he was awesome 
he was awesome because he had the same he he actually got that overacting Japanese samurai thing, you <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah. He really he really he really embodied it in, in a strange way. And and it, it, it it's and when he does the little speech about, you know, work getting this job and you're gonna take this job and you know and and, and you know, you're gonna walk up and break <laughs> this guy's face and and now, then you look down and you'll grab your rag and you're just gonna polish that spot. <laughs> you polish that spot again and again until that spot is perfect. And you know, and you're just like watching him do that. You know, was like he must have watched like Rashomon and all those movies. There. Oh yeah, oh yeah, because it has all all of that. But I have well, to I like you, the I like this. Well, I was doing this in the last episode last week. I was like, what do you say to the Eric Roberts who was like. You don't know what you can and what you can't do. And, 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 and Eric <laughs> Roberts was, and the weird thing about it, Eric Roberts is that he was such a complete and un, and, and unapolog, unapologetic. He no, was, but he was he was overacting that part, but it worked. And he was right. like, right. what are we doing now, partner? Yeah, he, he seemed to have take it, taken it, you know, from Birdie or something, you know, like, he broke my feet, don't cut my finger off, he cut my finger off, you know, it's, it's like, Well, I was oh. thinking of, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna love him and squeeze him and name him George, that's kind of yeah, what I was thinking. That's, 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 that's the character that he was, you know, and that's, the weird thing about it is that's the character that he was when he was up there, both him, both him and, and Voight were, were like, just, crazy people you know and i think and, that was actually I, one of his best performances for eric roberts because i've seen a lot oh, of eric roberts for, movies for eric yeah for eric roberts it, it was it just yeah uh, so what do you I, think there's there's like three well there's two main characters the two guys that the prison escapees yeah and there's I, rebecca the morning and, well i think no even before her i think the train is either a supporting actor or it's a main actor i don't I know i think it would <laughs> now now i have to tell you something though is the train the I mean, we we actually tried to uh, age the train, and, and we had made that front end piece, which is the wreckage of the train. Right. Yeah. Right? And and we made the wreckage of the train, and we made it so that it could be lifted off by a crane. And we had we had a, a siding with a crane on it, and and at the side we would take it to the siding, we'd take it off, take it off, and set it in the snow. And uh, which, which, by the way, this is something that you do learn pretty quickly in Alaska is you don't set things down in the snow <laughs> and, then, and then go away for any period of time. Right. Because <laughs> it's going to be pretty damn hard to find it when you come back. Yeah, I grew up in Wyoming, so I know that. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like. It, <laughs> I delivered newspapers. I have calls saying my newspaper's not here. We left. It was under honest, the snow. <laughs> honest to God, we left so many pieces of equipment and camera equipment and it just. Everything you because let's face it, if you had a lens in your hand and you dropped it, <laughs> yes, that that was that was gone. It was it might as well be on another planet because it would because it would be small and dense enough to like drop through the snow that you're standing on, right? And it would go somewhere, <laughs> right? You know, so it has to be that when the snow, because I know that we we lost two totally good you know uh cameras and we i can't tell you how many lenses and other pieces of equipment you know we lost going but but just the the process of working up there just is so much more complicated <laughs> to, than doing something down here uh so what were you doing i mean were most of the shots cutaways or were they because it seems like a lot of the stuff was in the studio at least in the inside the train and... Anything, yeah, anything that was inside the train was was done in the studio. But everything that was done outside uh, was actually done up there. Wow. All, all the yeah. views of it going through and, and stuff. And, and the thing is, is also all the views of them outside uh, on the oh, street, like climbing right? on the train. Yeah, uh, about half about half of them actually wound up being out there also. Well, I think uh, they'd have to be because, because we had them up there. Yeah. Right. It wasn't what what they were going to do is they were going to run a bunch of trains in uh, Minneapolis, uh, uh, Michigan. They were in northern Michigan and they were going to run with those trains. But they had a quick summer 
they had a quick winter, and by the time they got up to the shoot, all, all the snow was gone. So then first unit came up to join second unit. Um, so we shot, we shot with them, and 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 that that was the weird thing about it was is you know that dome, that domed car that we had in front that that we hit. Uh, yeah. That was actually, we were copying one that was in, uh, in Minneapolis and it was wood, right? <laughs> we made, we made our trains were wood copies of the ones that didn't shoot in the other state in oh, Michigan, wow. right? So, so we, and we had to maintain those things, uh, you know, the, all the paint, the paint was just leaping off like it, like it had no intention of being there in the first place. Right. <laughs> you know, it was just like ah, huge pieces. And so, so the thing is, is we had all these coats, you know, like, like multiple, what we did is we were all wearing like multiple army coats, you know? So you would get these thin army coats. You wear a whole bunch of them. You could take off like three of them and then oh. put three back. You know, it's, it's like Salvation Army coats, right? It, yeah. They, they, they you know that thing where you have one coat that covers everything? That is not the way things are done. You know? <laughs> is you have multiple coats yep. because then as you're working in them, you start to shed them because you you sweat and the sweat freezes. The next thing you know is you, you you're in you have 14 layers of coats and you're freezing to death, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so you're 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 very careful about that. So uh, the uh, the process of so what we would do is we would wear band ace bandages around us that had cans of spray paint, paint, spray paint, so you could lock them next to your body, and that way when you took them out, <laughs> and it was like thirty <laughs> degrees below, it would spray this along and go. The and then it freeze. Go, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And then you'd have to then you'd have to take what what is already a completely frozen can, right? <laughs> you have to take it and put it back in underneath the branded and grab the next one and Wow. <laughs> so It seems uh, like you've come up with some kind of warming device <laughs> for the can. We did, you with son of a bitch. I just told you about it. No, I'm talking like propane or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. So no. I like the scene where the the Moby Dick scene, <laughs> where the where it's crashing into the other thing. It reminded okay. me, well, <laughs> the stuff was flying everywhere. Yeah, flying everywhere. Yes, <laughs> I was in that caboose when we we actually. Here's the weird thing about it is we had a miniature that we were that that we were going. So we what we needed to do is we needed to get a a view of the two trains passing each other, and then the one cutting the other one cutting the other one off, right? And so we did it at like half speed, and then we were going to just go by each other, right? Um, because we had the miniature for when they crashed into each other. But let's just put it this way: it's not often that the Alaskan railroad system has to do uh, exacting, exacting maneuvers with the multiple trains. <laughs> right. <laughs> they don't do stunts very often, so, right? So <laughs> the problem is, is close can be both sides of the equation, right? <laughs> so I'm in there and, and I'm making the little uh, caboose smoke come out of the boot, caboose <laughs> up in that little thing up there that couple of out there and i'm looking as we go along and i and, and it's weird you know it's because you're looking at and you're going mm -hmm. and you're doing that math in your head going wow they're gonna really make this look close and then we nailed that other train and i'm telling you something the the that's the way that those work is that couple of up there on a on a caboose right you know the couple of up there yeah. that's actually only a really thin rail around the top of that and then it's um, uh, and then it's open all the way down, right? It's just to view, right? Things. Just so you can and, see, right? Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just remember, <laughs> I just remember being up there looking up and going, "Oh, uh, you know what? I, I think we've f***ed up." And then all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm just in the air, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. looking down. <laughs> oh man. And I, I 
splatted into the bottom of that thing. I'm telling you something. And, and the rending, the sound of rendings of everything going by, I was like, well, you know, I had a good run. <laughs> and that was 1985 or 84. Four probably right. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was eight four, eight five, something like that. I was like, oh god. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I was. Uh, I had a question. So, like, <laughs> this is kind of a spoiler, but like, at the very beginning of the movie, they could have just uncoupled the the engine, right? <laughs> you know, there's just no need to get it to be that way. You know, the, the, the whole listen, the, the whole thing is based on. The whole thing is based on an awful lot of weird fallacies, but you know, I, but well, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll give you one. This this was I know that this is weird, but we we went in and we really painted the train down and stuff. But what we but what we thought we thought that if we took it and put it outside, that it was going to get all the sun, all, all of the snow and everything else on it. But beans is it was a running that those oh, engines yeah. had to be running constantly. It'd be melting, right? Yeah. Yeah, they were hot. Right? And, and right. the thing is, is, so we're going down, so our test runs going down the road, uh, they they looked like they were warm. <laughs> and it's really weird. It, it, it's one of those things where you see in your mind what you want to see. You know, you, you know, well, look, if, if I take this train and I run it, you know, uh, with the constant snow and ice coming down, you know, it's going to instantly have snow and ice on it. But what we never did was we never stopped and looked around at all the other trains that were out there. And there wasn't a one of them that had any snow or ice on it. Wasn't the director from Russia? He would know that. <laughs> I mean, if you drive a car and it's snowing outside, there's not going to be any... Cause so you're going to melt the snow. Had, so then we had to take the trains and we had to take all four of them and put them back into the, uh, uh, basically, basically this was an electric plant that was no longer used, but it was still open, right? right. So the electric plant had a coal uh, drop off area that we used and we would drank, drive the trains back in and it was the coal chutes underneath, right? We're set up, but, but we weren't using that. And I remember that we, we were, uh, eventually, what we did was uh, we were like, "Oh yeah, no, now we're gonna make it look like ice, and 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 we'll make it uh, we'll make it break away." And so the weird thing about it was, is, is and you saw that uh, that you sent me a the making of runway train, right? Right. Yeah, I found this video. Then talking, <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. And, and you know how he was taking that little pan, right? And he was pouring the the glass on it, right? Yeah, yep. <laughs> I was like, dude, we are going. That was like epoxy, it, right? It was the epoxy. Yeah, well, that's it's yeah. PVC pipe, polyvinyl chloride pipe. If you uh. take, <laughs> if you take the uh, poly, if you take the chloride out of it, it will make a clear plastic oh. that's incredibly fragile. Right? Oh wow! Yeah. And the vinyl is the thing that goes back in to make it flexible, right? So, so that that's that's how they make those little pans of stuff, right? Gotcha. That's all. Okay. But <laughs> we had the we didn't have just the truck or that little area to do. We had the whole train to do. <laughs> so we started messing around with the little containers, just just like they did in that uh, thing. And then I I said, you know what, dude. I said we're never going to get anywhere like this. <laughs> so I ordered um, a thousand gallons of resin, <laughs> and, and and literally took a, a mixer and opened that little that little spinner in the middle of it and and catalyzed all fifty gallons at once with the mixer and got one of those. We had those lifters that came by with the hook and everything. Right. And and what 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 we do. And I know, and this is this is such a weird story because at the same time that we're doing this, the guys that are with the railroad are going, well, we're going to be able to just take this off, right? And when, <laughs> when we're done, and we're like, oh yeah, no, no problem. You know, all this stuff just it just sheds it. it it's it's just going to shed it off. And and I was taking 
50 gallons at a time and like literally drilling holes underneath <laughs> the 50 gallons and lifting it up and running it <laughs> down the length of the drain. Where's that video? <laughs> literally a thousand gallons of this stuff. Wow. So that's how you got that really heavy snow back. I so an ice effect, and then and then while it's setting, right, you're just blasting it with hands of hands of fake snow, and uh, and that's mostly potato. Flakes. Right. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so we're running these up and down, and, and literally we ruined the train. We ruined it. I mean, we actually <laughs> they set it on a siding, and that's a, that's a whole other story. We set it on a siding. <laughs> and I literally had a friend who brought me a picture of his. His cousin, who's who took pictures of trains, and he built calendars and pictures of trains. And I'm not kidding him. He goes, "Hey, Alexa, so my 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 cousin's latest uh, 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 catalog, uh, latest uh, uh, ca uh, um, calendar is here." And we look at it. In the third month, was my train was sitting there. <laughs> and he goes, "Well, how can I tell it's the train that you used on runaway train?" I said, "Well." If you get out a magnifying glass and you look at the numbers on the trains, you're going to find that they're 531 and 812. <laughs> and he did. And he looked it up and he says, holy shit, you're right. How did you know that? And I goes, well, that's, those are the birth dates of my two kids <laughs> at the time. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's awesome. So, so anyway, the, so the thing is, is they, we, poured so much resin on these damn things that they could never get it off. And they literally sit, put all four trains on the siding and never touched them again. They were covered. Oh, <laughs> I mean, they were, they, you know, it was a great look, right? Come on. No, it looked great, yeah. No, the whole the whole look was good, except for I was, like, questioning, like, low light. Must have been, like, an issue with lighting, because or unless I just looking at a bad copy, <laughs> because it seems like that was a choice maybe the director made, but maybe not. I was like, was it, was the lighting difficult? Because it seemed kind of grainy at some points. Like, you know how old, like, 70s oh, movies look, you know? Yeah, but that was... Is that a that film was, thing? It's like a film yeah, thing. Yeah, that's a film thing, you know? That's, but you see what I'm saying, though. It looked a little sometime, grainy. Sometimes it was so dark, uh, and, and the thing is, is the days when we started filming... We were just coming out of the dark part of the season, right? And right. It's not okay. like it, it's not like it's not like you had day night, day night, day night. You had kind of you know In darker between. period, <laughs> darker periods of the day. That's <laughs> what you had. No, it actually added to the movie. I, I mean, the fact that it, it had was, a grainy, gritty, yeah. black and white look. Yeah, that's all you could have managed because that's what was there. Um, yeah. No, I I, I got to tell you something. Just the the number of stories of dealing with the cold and and dealing with terror i i mean somebody pointed out to me and said you know what i can't believe that you're having trouble because we were having we had to get adapters to get this in the power plant the only power that they used in the power plant was 440 volt power right <laughs> and they yeah. had literally modified their own tools to work off of 440 so we had to go and build a bunch of adapters that took it down to 110 so that we wow. could operate our own tools <laughs> and and he goes he goes you know it is kind of ironic that you're in alaska trying to make a train look like it's cold <laughs> in a power plant where you can't get any electricity <laughs> go, that is funny <laughs> I go, yeah well you do what you got to <laughs> what well, is alaska everything's harder there right <laughs> oh god, yeah, oh, god, yeah. No, it was. I, I, I remember that 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 uh, the the crew we we had we had a uh, we had a tractor that we came and we pushed the trains around with the tractor to get them in and out and and get the right one in the right place at the right time. And I remember that the train guys just to f with us would take it out would take the tractor and put it just outside of the door that there was a mound of dirt out there that they, they parked the train they parked the tractors on that the uh, uh the uh uh fluids because it's so cold up there the fluids kind of like go over the seals right and so hydraulic fluid just spills oh. down 
Uh, so I would have this eight foot, <laughs> this eight foot high mound to climb to get into the tractor, and it was like the most impossible thing to climb in the in the world because the combination of ice and hydraulic fluid. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, you know, by the time I got, you could tell because I would be, you know, uh, on my transmission fluid red from my head to my oh. toe after I had gone out and moved the train around, you know, it's like, Ugh. no, it was just, it was just, it was just like constant <laughs> irritation. I remember the, like, uh, my wife, my wife came up <laughs> just before I left, my wife came up and, uh, and, she's, and we're walking hand in hand uh, on one of these trails to go back to the big uh, uh, main hotel area, and uh, here, and and both of us fell on our asses. <laughs> when we did, we were still holding hands, looking up at the uh, at the lights, the uh, northern lights. Right. Yeah. We thought, well, this sounds about right. Well, that sounds very romantic, you and your wife there. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, no, it was amazing. I mean, I mean, really, it was a, it was amazing time in my life. But I do have to say that, um, in, I mean, I was a pure California boy. I'd never been out of California before, and um, I remember getting on the plane and going all, uh, and getting all the way up there. And when we got up there, there was only five of us left in the plane that had gone all the way up to Alaska, that had gone beyond Seattle and gone to Alaska. I just remember landing and, and seeing nothing but snow on the sides, right? Right, And, yeah. and they uh, they were redoing the uh, terminal, so they didn't have, like, the, the causeway that comes out, right? They had, like, the truck that has the uh, steps the ladder. on it. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember the steps <laughs> coming around, watching it come around, and then they open the door and all five of us were there opening and it was probably minus 30 uh with the wind chill and i remember i just took this breath this <laughs> it froze my legs and i was like no no wait 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 no no i'm making a horrible mistake <laughs> That's all I could think of, right? Because it it took me a good ten minutes before I I before I I before I was uh, settled on the fact that I was going to stay. Plus, you probably <laughs> didn't have the right. Did you have the right coat on at the time? I had the wrong coat on. I, I was going to say, I, if you're from California, you might not oh, be prepared. I, no, I had I had Gore-Tex, and I sort of got everybody was laughing at me. They're like, "No, nah, dude, nah, go to the go to the nearest." Because they 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 have a, a they had a surplus stores. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, some yeah. of the best things I had when I was growing up in Wyoming were army surplus like masks oh, yeah. and stuff when I was skiing. Oh, but it's the army surplus masks, the bunny boots, the uh, yes. The, oh, and the, the gloves. Multiple, the, the the gloves, the multiple layers of little. The, the thing that you wore up there was these like uh, the Swedish uh, uniform sweaters were the best. Because the, you just put, you just, uh, you'd have on a U.S. Uh, shed, you know, which is just like, just a, a like thin, a thin layer, kind of a wind. It was kind of like an oversized windbreaker, yeah. right? And underneath that, you put these Swedish, multiple Swedish layers. And I remember that by the time I left, because uh, I never want, I never, they were two dollars a piece, and I never once washed one of them. So they were just in piles and piles and piles and piles all over the room. Literally were about as high as the bed when I left. You know? <laughs> piles and piles and piles and piles and piles. The yeah, sweaters damp. It smelled pretty awful. Wow. But, but that was how I survived up there. It was $2 sweaters. <laughs> Keep the wildlife away if you smell bad, probably, too. Oh, my, yeah. I only wish. I mean, I, 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 I got to see a moose up. Oh yeah. Close. Yeah. I like your moose story. That was yeah. Cool. Well, you know, I, I, I we, we were, uh, on the side of a mountain, uh, doing avalanche gates. Right. And, uh, one of the trails off it, it, and it's like, you know, 500 feet down, uh, to, uh, the bottom where several of our cameras are, are were already. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm up along this trail, uh, going off, uh, 
to, to get a piss, take a piss, and, and I'm taking this piss behind this tree, and um, I just smelled this awful, awful, awful smell. And I was like, oh, what the f*** died out here? You know, and I was looking down at what died, but it wasn't down. It was, <laughs> it was on the next tree over behind that tree, and it's uh, it was a full grown moose. Man, I gotta tell you, I thought a moose was like the size of a horse. This is not at all true. A moose is twice a horse, right? You yeah, know? like thirteen and I, feet. And, and, and I, I'm taking this piss and finally, like, kind of like look around the tree like this, <laughs> and and the. The moose knew I was there, but A, they aren't very smart, and B, they have they have to get an eye on you, right? And the thing is, is the only way they can do that is swing their heads back and forth, right? So he's swinging his head back and forth, and I'm paying, and so we're we're playing moose peekaboo, mooseaboo, <laughs> mooseaboo. <laughs> wow. And I'm just like. Talk about scared the piss out of you. I mean, and and then eventually, eventually he wandered off because he never got he never got like one eye on me. I was on the other, <laughs> well, you know, there is nothing more exhilarating than peeing in the cold, frigid snow. Yeah, Which adding, is, yeah. but but adding the layer of moose. The layer of moose makes it even more exciting. <laughs> it, it does. And, and and it's 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 very high on the experience uh, caliber thing, you know. And you know he's probably sitting around somewhere telling his his grandkids about I this never time. Got, I never got that little that he and the human were like playing human peekaboo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, what I thought was great is while we were up there, while we were up there, they uh, there was a uh, uh, there was always a count going on uh, uh, as to how many. Moose had been killed by the because the moose walk on the rails, right? And the and, and the, the the trains will come along and they'll hit the moose, knock it off the rail, and they'll note where it is so that people can go out and get the moose, right? Because moose meat is highly prized up there. Um, but uh, I, I remember one day looking at at the paper, uh, the Fairbanks uh, newspaper, and it said. Um, uh, Alaskan Railroad 50 Moose 1. And there was an overhead <laughs> shot looking down of a moose in the middle of the track and a complete train on its side. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, the there there was a out. shot in the movie with, I think there were moose running, if I remember oh, right. Uh, they were everywhere. I think they were moose. I gotta tell you. <laughs> yeah. Um, not, not pleasant moose. So did you, wasn't the shot... Uh, it was shot somewhere else besides California and Alaska, wasn't it? Uh, I don't know. It was. It was supposed to be Montana, I think. Oh, Montana, yes. Yeah, it was supposed to be Montana, but I don't. They didn't wind up shooting very much in Montana. They, ah. they, because the thing is, is they they just didn't have the right look. It was the the uh, ice had all gone. Plus, it seems like it'd be really flat, like Alaska. More uh, mountainous than Alaska. Well, I don't think that would have made it. Well, I guess Montana's mountains. Montana's Never mind. Got a, oh, it, <laughs> I, I mean, it, it was a great look. It, it was, but, you know, it, hmm. it just, it wound up being, um, you know, it was, it was mooseless <laughs> well, and iceless. Well, there are moose in Montana, but I mean, you know. <sighs> well, so anyway, so what'd you think of the movie too? I, I, I love the movie. I really do. I, I, I love the movie a lot. I, I, I think it, uh, uh I was surprised that it only got a uh, an Academy Award for editing. Uh, and by the way, that was a huge upset because it was an independent filmmaker that uh, got uh. was got an editing uh, uh, Oscar on that. Wow! I mean, a lot a lot of a lot of the modern uh, at that time, uh, like all the Michael Douglas movies and the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, it's 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 Indiana Jones. Occasionally, occasionally, an independent or a foreign one would be nominated for something, but it never won. Right. Right. And and that was kind of like one of the first victories, uh, you know. Was well, for I thought, editing, which I, I, yeah, I, the yeah, editing, editing was good. The yeah. editing was actually pretty clean. And yeah, actually, whole, what I like about this too is that it's old school. I mean, think about how they, this kicks ass compared to a lot of the 
CGI you see nowadays. Like, oh yeah, it's actually possible to do everything old school. <laughs> I think it no, looks great, it, actually. It really Where is. His fingers you know? get crushed. That was like my one of my favorite shots. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I like the stuff looking down. You know, with the yeah, where they're looking down, but he was he was grabbing like in this thing. He was grabbing the coupling. Now, he put his fingers. In. <laughs> but I also I also thought that the train running through looked really great, considering that you know all all the um, we had to do a lot of experimenting with uh, running down the with snow. What right. we're going to use for snow? Uh, we did borrow a device that. Uh, did snow uh from uh a, a ski resort but the weird thing about it is it would come out in a really particular pattern <laughs> oh okay and, yeah and as the the pattern the thing is is we had to we had to run a cart in front of it and the pattern would maintain uh because it was frozen in the air and so <laughs> and we didn't have a fan big enough to knock the pattern out of it right it's like so could you break we, it <laughs> I mean, well you know what we know what we did is we did we ended up trying potatoes ah potatoes uh, yes potato flakes <laughs> potato flakes but the problem with potato flakes is that they would uh, uh we had to throw them we had to uh, get them thrown up in the air uh and they wouldn't stay long enough to like get to the train itself because uh, we needed a certain amount in front of the train but yeah. you know what worked perfectly was duck down <laughs> wow. and i cannot tell you how many bags of duck down that we and it probably sticks to everything doesn't it uh well it, it's, it's such a big thing though i mean you have to remember this is we were doing the wide shots we were, most of the shots we were doing were wide and so, uh, and that's all of its own problem. There were a lot of wide shots, actually, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and that's, we had to go to duck down so we could get it to disperse enough to, because duck down actually gets up in the air. It and floats, it, yeah. And it, yeah, and it, and it related to the eddies of the train going by and, you know, kicked oh, it and swirled yes. it and got it going. And, and, and it really looked absolutely perfect but it was so ungodly expensive because we <laughs> we didn't want just duck down we wanted pure white duck down you know so man I, I i mean the thing is is that we were we were uh we almost almost every day we had something coming up with the that old company flying tigers oh yeah they yeah. were doing out they were doing overnight runs up to alaska for us like almost constantly we just we duck things. down Oh yeah, with duck down and things like breakaway glass and you know hydraulic sauna fluid tubes and all <laughs> Hydra yeah, and hydraulic fluid, everything you'd think of, yeah. Yeah. Well yeah, I mean no, I think the Actually, one thing that worked about this, you were talking about wide shots. I was like, that's one thing that worked was that the shots of the train were pretty much wide shots. But then when they showed the characters, they were tighter shots. And that was what this movie was about. It was about more of the characters, the two guys that were in the thing. And right, then the girl but... kind of showed up. But right, I think but the train it, and the two guys were the main characters, and she yeah, was kind of a secondary. Get, that's right. And to get the train, you had to have the whole train. Yeah, you had to get the whole thing. You had to get the whole thing, and so. And the so front it, of the train looked amazing. I, the way it was bouncing after it was yeah, mangled. Yeah, just, <laughs> and the junk and, and everything that we put up there. That was yeah. fun. That was what. That was my own little personal rigging thing to get that on and get it off, and 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 I built that, or you know, I had my crew built it and I designed that and everything. It was, it was a lot of fun. Well, there you go. Well done on that, then. Thank you. Actually, and also the train, one thing I really liked about this that was done right was that the plot is carried by the train because the train gets faster and faster as the movie climaxes. Right. And it I thought it built tension. It helped build away. tension. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but I think yeah. they, they added the girl just in time, even though she wasn't really that important. I think they she, she came in just at the right time. <laughs> so I was getting tired yeah. of those two. <laughs> yeah 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 exactly no i i think the whole but i think thing it was... and the ending was perfect i mean it, it was a little yeah. cheesy though i don't i'm not sure about the guys in the prison like looking in the distance going you know yeah, as, as... But, but, but the thing is is that that's very japanese you know it is, it is. <laughs> well i was thinking of kamikaze pilots because we had talked about that a couple weeks ago <laughs> right right exactly we, and i was like that reminds me of that so yeah there is something about it that is that is very uh very Kurosawa. It is a very Kurosawa movie. You know? But I want to know what the movie would have been like if he directed it in 1965, what that movie would have been like. But 
we'll Lord never knows. we'll never know <laughs> but no i thought this was surprisingly good in fact i i think i'd seen it like years ago but i forgot about it because i remembered parts of it i'm like wait a minute i remember this and you and everybody else <laughs> and then yeah no but i thought it was actually it i, I don't even know i wasn't a i was 11 when it came out so i mean was it really a big hit or was it kind of uh I mean, because there were a lot of other movies that came out around the same time. Yeah. That I, you know what? I, I don't know. I, don't, I, I have no idea what it made in, in, in terms of its... Uh, I, have to, I have to tell you a little story, though. Story time. We went into town. Uh, we, we wound up down in Anchorage at one point, And we saw the control board that the train service had. And the funny thing about it is, you know how clunky, how clunky that... Uh, that control room looks. Yes. Right. I mean, I mean, if there is something to criticize on it, it's how incredibly clunky that. Speaking of army looks, surplus. Right. But here's the funny thing about it is, the one that they had up there looked exactly like that. Right. It it looked like it was made by a bunch of guys who make trains. You know. Yeah, it's actually, it was, yeah, you're right. Yep. And it was enormous, and it was enormous, and it was very, uh, very. Uh, uh, zero technology kind of thing but it had all these lights on it blinky and, lights and I, I said well what are all the red lights around here and he says the red lights are for uh um they're for uh avalanches because we were fighting avalanches all the time that we were up there uh and, and it's really funny is, is as he says that all of a sudden uh a red light pops on over here and he goes let me give you an example. And all of us come over and we look at this one area and I go, wow, that's funny. <laughs> that's 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 right where we put that little shack that the wheels, you, you know, the wheels come off and the yeah. wheels hit the shack, right? The place that we put that shack was, the first time <laughs> was where the first red light was that I saw. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we went by there and the entire it was a valley before <laughs> oh, and, now, and now it was a ridge <laughs> oh, wow that's awesome at least you weren't there when it happened oh yeah at least i was just watching red light go on and go wow well that's a hole in one how do you like that <laughs> well i was looking at the the tv monitor the monitors they had and i was like oh i have to remember this is 1985 it's not yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's Commodore 64 or whatever that was. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, no. back, back, back when it was acceptable to still have to still have black and white or yeah. green and white monitors everywhere, right? Oh, that's the other thing is there were three three stories going on. It was like the the two runaways, the the prison right. escapees. Then you had the people at the train station trying to stop the train, and then you had the warden chasing down the the people. Right. So yes. I thought that that was what made it interesting too is that there's like three stories at once and they all kind of converge. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, but, uh, So anyway, it was a great screenplay, and I think the Russian guy did a good job. Спасибо. I thought he did a great job. I'm, I, I mean... I and, but the, he wouldn't have done this well without the second unit carpenter guy named Mick Strawn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, because, you know, the train looked amazing. I thought everything was great. And uh, I found that weird behind-the-scenes video, and I was like, they were talking about shooting in the studio in California. But it what was, was the it was, the, it was the so prison? Was, I've seen that prison a thousand times. What prison so is that? It was so weird to see them out there with the, with the little things doing the, the, yeah, the it was little like, things with the, uh, fascinating. with the breakaway glass over it. And I was thinking, yeah, okay, yeah. I did a thousand gallons of that. You guys had it hard <laughs> in the 80s. <laughs> But what what prison was that? Because that looked really familiar, like very California. I don't know. I think that that was part of the thing that they filmed in Montana, actually. Montana, okay. But it looked like a. It reminded me of a prison I've seen a lot. Maybe it just looked like another yeah, I'm prison. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that it's a, that it's a Montana prison. Huh. Well, there you go. That's what was shot in Montana. So there you go. <laughs> Which, by the way, that's a great way to start a movie. Yes. <laughs> With flames in the hallway of a prison, uh, and then uh, Danny Trejo. It's like his first yeah. movie. Here, here's no, no. His it wasn't his movie, first. His, what was his first movie? Was the Hidden? Oh no, the Hidden was 1987. I read somewhere that this was his first, so maybe was it his first? It, oh, it could have possibly been. And but then the Hidden his, was. But uh, either way, I got his first and his second. So basically, 1985 and 1987 were good years for you. What happened after that? 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Revenge of the Nerds three. <laughs> my, my wife says that the further the further I, that I uh, got away from 1982, uh, the less uh, I understood about technology. Well, that's okay. That's you know what? People are still asking you to work on their movies, so yeah, yeah it's obviously true. doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, Old meets is, new. Yeah. Now this has been fun, and this is a long one, right? This is a good one. Yeah, there you go. What do you rate this as uh, a movie? You know what? I I'm gonna go with a four. I'm I'm right there with you. I'm like gonna give it a. a I think I a like four. A I don't think it's I, perfect, so I wouldn't give it a five. But I give it a four because yeah. it's. Yeah, but I'm, if you I'm, like trains, watch this movie, and if you like cold weather too. The the only thing the only thing that I have is uh, I have it against the stars because I because I had to deal with Eric Roberts and. And both of them were just, you know, really awful, awful human. Eric Roberts, particularly, he was, he was quite full of full of himself. And you know, to give you an indication of how bad he could be in the mornings, is like there was a mandatory uh, game of uh, uh, draw a straw. So we had have to mandatorily draw straws to see who was going to wake him up every morning. Oh my God. Yeah, That's funny. That bad. That That's bad. hilarious. Well, yeah. you know, he didn't really, I don't think he really earned that. Like, I think John Voight earned it. I mean, if you've seen like Coming Home. Yeah. Yeah. John Voight's a stellar actor, but I don't know if I can say the same about Eric Roberts so much, <laughs> yeah. but. Yeah. Eric Roberts is, a, yeah, he does, a, he does a thing and he does it good enough. It's funny you've run into a lot of jerky actors. What's up with that? Like, uh, it's probably just your luck, or is that just how they were in the eighties? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, well, yeah. If you, but but think of how many actual actors I've dealt with. I a mean, lot. I've yeah. dealt with a lot. The ones that stand up out are the assholes, right? Yeah, you know that's 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 kind of that's that's kind of a problem we all have in life, right? <laughs> Oh man. Well, anyway. Okay. Well, okay, thank guys. you for for sticking with me on this one cuz I wanted to I definitely wanted to see this one with you, so. Yeah, there there you go and it, it, you got a lot of stories on it, too. I did. It's a, it's a good one. I got to find another one now. 